so it's happened again. The PC downgrade. It almost happens so frequently that frankly I find myself not taken aback nor surprised by it. But everyone else seems to be putting into an uproar over this. I frankly can't understand why. It's almost seasonal. Like, downgraded versions of games ported to PC is such a regular occurrence, I don't know why anyone is surprised, shocked, or angry. But, nonetheless, it's happened again. The Division developer concedes PC version was downgraded to stay in check with consoles. This was posted on February 7th, 2016, so I'm a little late. Probably because I kind of have a little bit of a life now. A little bit, not much of one, so don't get angry at me. It's a slight life. Not a good one, though. Believe me, if you knew what I was dealing with, you'd be like, I don't see why he leaves his room. He has no reason to live. He should just do cocaine and die. Gloriously, because he's a magnificent bastard. But in all seriousness, one can't help but notice the visual downgrades in the Division build and on all platforms. While the game is certainly not bad looking, it isn't quite the same as it was back when it was first revealed during E3 2013. Today, a Ubisoft developer has conceded during an interview that the PC version was kept in check technologically speaking with the console counterparts. Ubisoft has been doing this for a while. It has, uh, let's see. Remember Assassin's Creed? I mean, who could forget they come out every year. Remember when they were trying to lock it at 30 frames or some ridiculous shit? Uh, oh, uh, the game's more cinematic that way at 30 frames on all platforms. Remember Watch Dogs? Like, the trailer for that actually looked mildly interesting to me. Now, when I say mildly interesting, it's because I am a Ubisoft hater. I've become one in recent years. I've become very cynical of Ubisoft, and whenever they put out a game, I look at it and go, eh, it's Ubisoft. I know what I'm going to get with Ubisoft. I'm going to get a port that isn't exactly great, that doesn't run very well. I learned my lesson, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, you play Siege. That's new. That's because Zill got it for me. All right, he's a friend of mine. You know, even though we fuck with each other all the time, he's probably one of the better friends I have in life, I'll admit. Because I guess only a troll can be friends with a troll. If he didn't get that for me, I doubt I would have bought it. Because I'm so tired of Ubisoft. I really am. They always do this to the point where it's like I'm not that interested anymore. Also, the game mechanics kind of blow. I'm sorry, but the division is fairly boring. I can only see the division working if you have a group of friends you really like. I got the same feeling from The Division that I got from Destiny when I played that beta on P PS4. It was like, I'm playing it, I'm like, okay, this is alright. Then 30 minutes later, I realized this is all the game fucking is. This is it. I'm losing interest rapidly. This is basically Ubisoft's answer to Destiny. Hell, it's even got a D in the title. Division. Destiny. Hmm, not far from each other. I mean, well, The Division, by definition, is totally different than Destiny, but still, you get where I'm going with this. The developer went on to say that it would be unfair to push the PC version of the Division a lot farther ahead from the console versions. That said, he did appreciate the existence of a dedicated PC build. Ubisoft has become known for making noteworthy downgrades to the visual makeup of its games after their initial reveals. It would seem that the Division is no different in this regard, although this is the first time a developer has pointed towards consoles as a limiting factor. We'd certainly like to know how the PC community feels about this. Should the PC and console versions of multi-platform games maintain a degree of parity? Or should each of them get pushed to the best of their capabilities? Regardless of how good the scaling and how demanding the system requirements may be, share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Someone on some random form that I can't seem to find, and I don't care to look, did say what was perfectly summed up. This person said, Remember when Ferrari and Lamborghini scaled down the performances of their cars because a lot of people at Ford that owned Fords couldn't keep up with the 220 horsepower brake engines? Oh wait, no, they never did that because they're not stupid. I think that sums it up perfectly, honestly. It really does. Only in the video game industry do we see this level of pandering to any group. It just makes no sense. It's as if like PC gamers are to be punished for having a superior machine simply because not everyone can afford one or people feel that like they are too intimidated to build and the funny thing is it's not like pcs are that expensive in this day and age you can get a pretty nice pc for under 600 dollars hell it's been proven if you use your money correctly and are willing to use used parts you could build a pc for around 300 dollars that completely and utterly topples console games or the console systems even if you have a pc at your house and 
it's like you could switch out the graphics card like it isn't a totally fucked you know dell home computer where everything's kind of like soldered to the motherboard and you could just switch out your graphics card you could do that you could get a hundred dollar graphics card and have a better visual performance than you get from the consoles so it's not like it's out of anyone's range i don't understand why ubisoft continuously does this but i won't be supporting their shenanigans and anyone who's upset by my opinion, well, that's on you. I believe the term they call is salty and butthurt, because it really is. You know what? I'd like to own a Yamaha R1 2016 edition, or 2016 BMW S1000RR, or a Ducati motorcycle, so on and so forth, but I can't really buy one. You don't see me sitting here complaining about how those bikes are too much for the streets and yada yada yada. You know, it, it, there's no point in it. I just can't get one. So what? Uh, thank God it's out there. Maybe one day I can get one. That's my view. I mean, if you're playing consoles and you are put off by PCs having better performance and feel, no, the PC version shouldn't look any better because not everybody can afford one. You're an asshole. You know, that's like, well, you know what? Uh, because I can't get laid, the guy next door shouldn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's how it should be. Everything should be fair for me. Oh, God. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just, it, basically, my anger is towards Ubisoft. I really don't understand this move. And frankly, they've done it so many times. It's just like, eh, whatever. Screw the division. It's, it's honestly not that great. If you want my personal opinion from the beta, eh, you know, it's, the open beta is going to be out soon. But I'm going to tell you right now, someone who's tested the beta, the closed beta, you're not missing much. You're not. The only way you'll love the division is if you love, like, these sort of mindless shooter RPGs, quote unquote on the RPGs, because it doesn't feel like an RPG, then you'll love this. Like if you like just shooters, but you want to pretend you like RPG games, then this is for you. If you like Destiny, you'll love the, the, the Division. That's all there is to it. You'll love it. Uh, if you're easily entertained, you'll love this. If you thought The Witcher was amazing, then you'll probably be kind of bored by this. I don't know. I don't know how to break it to you. But for me personally, I feel the Division is nothing special. And I guarantee you, in like two months after release, you'll see it on Green Man Gaming for like $30 or something. Because it's just there's no meat on this bone. And there's already, what, a season pass for this? Screw it. Screw it. It's another one of those games where they're going to try and milk you for the long run. They're going to sell you pieces of the motherfucking game that isn't even that great. But like, everybody goes, oh, Destiny's screwed now. After all the DLC spoon release, yeah, they finally gave you the full game. Lottie friggin' die. You gave them $120 for a full game. Well, you know, here's the difference between Destiny and Star Citizen. At least I know I'm paying up front a lot of money to get a fucking ship. Oh, fuck it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I believe I'm now very salty, so I'm gonna put it on my crackers, bitch. <laughs> Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe to the worst YouTuber you've ever seen. <laughs>